Welcome back students to another Programming 11 tutorial by Mr. Rowell. We're actually going to do something in between this and the last lesson I promised. The last lesson being on showing visual information about scores and health and the like. Before we do that, I thought I'd show you about how we can add a little bit more interesting behavior to this game. If you've ever played the original Asteroids game, and if you haven't, I recommend you pause this video and Google it. It's a pretty fun little game. There is some behavior that's more interesting than our current asteroids. In the current iteration of our game, if we take damage, we get a little pause window here to get out of harm's way. As we're damaging the asteroid, it's going to show some visual information about how much damage it's taking. But this big asteroid, oops, took the damage again, just disappears when it's defeated. In the real world, since we want our game to be realistic, this asteroid would be breaking up into smaller pieces. We want to add that functionality to our game. And it's a, a bit of a different set of logic we have to do here to get it set up. So I thought I'd show you. You're going to be adding in your own functionality very soon. This is the last one that I want to show you myself, just to make sure we really understand what's going on here. So I have my Asteroid class open. And at the bottom, I'm going to be adding in a new method. Let's do the same thing, right? Some space. Hopefully I don't screw it up again. And I'm going to be adding in a method called Spawn Asteroids. What I want this to do is when my asteroid is destroyed, I want it to create some new asteroids. Let's say three of them. I think that's kind of the general way we do it. You can make it many more than three, but for now, we're just going to make it spawn into three smaller asteroids, and ideally ones with less health. And we want it to be limited. We don't want it to spawn indefinitely, otherwise our game would never end. But we want to have a, through a few different cycles to add, so the game gets harder as it goes. You know, if one thing's splitting into three, and then it splits into three more, the screen's going to get busier. So it adds in a whole new layer of strategy and challenge to the gameplay, which is always a good thing to do for a game like this. So how is it that we are going to do this? Well, I want it at its basic core. I'm just going to start kind of in the middle here talk you through how I would set this up. I'm going to start by creating a new asteroid. So asteroid, let's call it new asteroid. And it's a new asteroid. And let's think about what kind of information we have to tell Greenfoot to get this asteroid to be spawning. There's a couple things we could do. I could access my initial constructor, which automatically creates it. Remember here, it's the size of our asteroid is 50. Or I could also access my overloaded constructor, if I want to make it a smaller size. And I don't want my new asteroid to be the same size. It's breaking apart. I need it to be a smaller size. So what should the size be? Well, if I'm breaking it into, let's say, three parts, then the ideal size would likely be I have here my size of my asteroid stored in this class, so I can access it. I'm going to say size divided by three. So it's going to spawn an asteroid. Now, what do I do with the spawned asteroid? Well, I have to get my world, and I have to add this object. I have to add this new asteroid. What do I want to add it? Let's just say it's added in the same spot this asteroid that just died left, right? That's kind of, kind of logical here. So let's think through what we expect to happen here. When this is run, it's going to create a new asteroid that's a third the size in the same spot of the asteroid that was just destroyed. We're going to think about when do we want this to run? We want it to run right after the asteroid has been blown up. We have to be careful about the order here, though. If I were to run this method, spawn asteroids, after this, nothing's going to happen because this object is what runs this logic, all the logic inside of here. If I remove the object before this runs, well, it can't run. It's gone. I need to do this first. Once its health reaches zero, it's going to spawn a new asteroid and then remove the one that was there previously, all in kind of one quick succession. It's going to do this first, but it happens so quickly to us it looks like it's instantaneous. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to be targeting this particular asteroid, trying to blow it up. It's getting lower. Come to me, asteroid. And when it blew up, take a look at that. We have a new asteroid a third the size spawning into our world. Now, one thing I do notice, I like the idea of a third, but it looks kind of small. I'm just going to make it half the size uh, for the next step that we're having in line here. So, I want this to be able to make asteroids, plural, three of them. To do this, I'm going to introduce you to a new 
logical structure that you might not have seen before that we're going to see if we can implement. It's called the for loop. What this allows us to do is to run the same code as many times as we set it to. I know some of you have been experimenting with this already, but for those who haven't, here's a great chance to try it out. Inside, we have three pieces of information. The first one is our initial state. And usually, in most cases, we're defining a new variable for this. I'm going to say a new integer. We normally go with i. It can be whatever you want, really. I'm going to set it to 0. So my initial state is 0. The second piece of information involves what are the rules for how long this loop will run. And in this case, I want, let's say, three asteroids. So I'm going to say as long as i is less than 3. Let's pause and think this through. I'm going to set my state to i equals 0. I'm going to say as long as i is less than 3. i is 0 the first time. What am I going to do in the final slot? The final piece is what do I do each loop? I'm going to increase i by 1 first time, i will be 0. Is it less than 3? It is. So it will run its code. Then it will increase i by 1. Now i equals 1. Is it less than 3? Yep. Run the code. Increase it by, uh, by 1 again. Now i equals 2. Is it less than 3? Yep. Run the code. Increase it by 1. Now i is 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. End. Exit out of this loop. This setup is going to allow whatever is in this loop to run three times. I'm going to stick the code for spawning my asteroids inside of this. And now let's think about, oh, let's tab this over right. Get my spacing a little bit better here. Let's think about what should happen here. Whenever I spawn asteroids, I should be creating three asteroids that are all half the size of the original, all being added to the, the world in the same spot the original one was. Now, are they going to be going the same direction or different ones? Let's remember that when an asteroid is created, it sets its rotation based off of a randomizer. So it is possible two or three of those could go the same direction. It's just unlikely. Let's see what this looks like in actual application. Let's get this thing destroyed. And it looks like, is there, a, is there one that's just overlapping by co complete coincidence? Let's just destroy another one and see what happens here. There's three. So we ran into that weird coincidence. Wow, that's pretty funny. Awesome. So what's going to happen here now if I destroy one of these? Let's see if I can do it without dying. So I'm damaging this one. It's going to spawn some more that are even smaller. Let's try and get one of those bad boys. Show you my gaming skills here. Oh, I hit. Let's try and track this one. It should be this one up here. Let's hit it a few more times. These little guys are a real pain. Oh, I failed. Well, <laughs> let's try one more time and see how I can do. Um, let's just see. Hopefully you're entertained by this. It's almost like a let's play. Let's play Mr. Owl's really bad space game. I think this is the one I was damaging. There we go. Three more little ones. And so the problem with the game right now is that well, there's a couple things. One, these are going to keep on shrinking indefinitely. There's no way to actually win. Maybe you want to have it as a high score. This could be fine with a high score to kill as many as you can. But the smaller and smaller they get, they're going to be really hard to track. I want there to be a limit to how many spawn. And I also want to change one other element of this, which is when they're smaller, shouldn't they be easier to destroy? Well, I think that makes sense. First of all, let's worry about the size. We're setting the size initially to be 50. I need to set some condition for how long this spawns for. I'm going to do it in a bit of a magic number way and leave it up for you to you to see if you can make this a little bit more generalized. I'm going to say if the size of my asteroid is greater or equal to 20. Here's why. The first time it spawns, the asteroids will be size 50. It'll allow some more spawn. Then they'll be half the size. The next ones will be size 25. If those are destroyed and they try and spawn more, the size is still above 20, so it'll spawn a third set. That set divided by 2 is 12.5. It'll actually get rounded down to 12, but that's not important right now. 12 is less than 20, so that after that third set, it will not spawn any new asteroids any longer. Magic number way to do this? I want you to figure out how to make this more generalizable, but this should work for us for now. Please work spacebar. 
I want to make sure everything is indented in. Each new layer needs to be indented in. I can see the nice color coding to show me how the logic all lines up there so beautifully. Wonderful. So this is going to make it so that after the third set explode, no more will explode after that. So I can actually clear the whole board. I'm not going to play through it right now. You can try that out on your own. But one last layer I want to make. I want this health to be able to be decreased, the max health, each time I run through this. See if you can figure out for yourself, how would you make it so that each time the new set of asteroids are spawned, you decrease the health a little bit? Try and pause the video once you got this code in and solve it for yourself, and then the end of this video will be me showing the solution. All right, I'm back. In case you didn't realize, I don't actually go anywhere. I just wait for you to pause, you know. It's, okay, sorry. Back to what we're doing here. What I'm going to be doing for my particular solution to this is I'm going to be changing my constructor a little bit to accept a second piece of information for max health. I originally set my max health down here to 20. I'm going to be doing it a bit differently this time. My first constructor needs, this is where I set the initial maximum health instead of here. Um, we'll deal with this in a sec. I set my initial max health to 20, and then it's going to set my max health in here to max health. Now, I want to also think about setting the state. And in the setting the state, now I think it's actually already pretty good because the current health is going to be automatically set to the maximum health. And the maximum health is set by whatever I send to it in the first place. This should be enough logic to get this up and running the way that I want it to work. Let's see how this goes. Down here now, I have a problem. Creating a new asteroid, it expects another input. What do I want to send to it? Well, it's expecting in its second constructor the maximum health. Each time the asteroid is decreased by half, I want its max health to be decreased by half as well to make it easier to kill. Then when the new asteroid is created, it will be created with its max health being half of what it used to be, and that will also set the current health to that same max that will be decreased the same way with each weapon. With everything I just added here, let's actually take a quick peek at it. What I should find is that I'm only able to see, see if I can beat my game, to see them asteroids split three times, and each time they split, the asteroid should be easier to kill. So before what, two missiles was required, now one missile is sufficient. And with these small ones, it should just be, even like a couple fireballs should be enough to kill them because they only have a quarter amount of the health as the original ones in the first place. So let's start whittling these all down. As I'm fighting it, I'll try and summarize what we've done so far. Now we have customized controls for our ship. We have some enemy actors in the world that we can interact with that are unique projectiles that we created using inheritance are all able to be accessed really easily and perform the same types of basic functionality, which is do damage that we've accessed to a particular object. Our ship is actually able to now also interact with the objects in the world around it, taking damage from asteroids that it crashes into, and Oh, I failed. That's all right. Taking damage from asteroids it crashes into, there's a little window where it can survive, get, give some breathing room to move to a new place, and the asteroids are now more interesting so that they can split into different parts with different health. You can even, if you wanted to, change the code to change the speed of the asteroids. When they're smaller, they move a bit faster. If you study physics, that make, make, makes some more sense. Um, with the impact of collisions and some of the types of stuff that goes on there. It's up for you to decide how you want to implement some of these aspects, but get your program running in this way. And in the next one, which will be the last video in this initial tutorial series, we will be adding in a scoreboard and a health tracker before I set you off on your own design challenge to follow.